Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. And here we have Emma Lynn. Emma Lynn. And what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, go over some different program structures. So these will also be generic programs uh, where we show some different formats of programs and different ways of uh, having different program structures, which is very, very important and is, is definitely a fundamental when it comes to uh, programming, robots, or really anything for that matter. So let's go ahead and jump right into the software here. Uh, here you can see the uh, code that we've generated on the last uh, video that we had did, or maybe it's a couple videos before. But uh, th this program essentially just has like a call home, which is like we're just calling this our init program. So it's your initial program uh, that sets everything back to a good running state. So the way this code is going to execute is after you do your init, you're going to come into the main loop here which the main loop is in between line 3 and line 11 okay so after you run through all your code you're gonna hit this jump label and you're gonna go back up to label 10 you're gonna run through all this code you're gonna jump back up to label 10 right all this code is written in a way where uh, there is no decision making being done it runs through this program then it runs through this program then it runs through this program and then it jumps back up to the top. And it'll continue that process indefinitely unless the robot crashes or somebody e-stops the robot, something along those lines. So we want to give you a quick rundown of this version of the code, which majority of the time you wouldn't use this. There's gonna be some decision making going on. Uh, you know, if you have an alt or alt or simple application, maybe you just have a sensor that says, hey, a box is present. And maybe you have a sensor that's saying there's a pallet present. And then outside of that, you can just run through this code and not have really any other inputs. But most applications are not like that. Most applications have a ton of more inputs that are coming from uh, devices such as PLCs or other robots. Uh, but in this particular instance, it's just an example of robot code that does not have any type of external inputs. So all of your IO would be coming from the robot controller itself through digital IO that may be uh, from digital IO cards that it has within its controller. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let Emma take over now. So go ahead and we're gonna create a new program so we can show them a new structure. So go to your select button down there. Oops. Right, there you go. Select, now we're gonna go create. Create. Create, down here, yep. Uh, now you gotta go options keyboard keyboard again down here okay now I'm gonna just type this in to be faster underscore main one okay Hit enter and then enter again to end this and it'll take it in take us into here oh oops we gotta get our teach pendant back here again Oop, teach pendant okay now to keep this structure the same we are going to uh, go instruction Then we're gonna go call, yep, call program, call program. And we're gonna call underscore home. Yep, boom, okay. Now we're gonna go down here. We gotta go edit command. Edit command, yep. There you go, insert, one insert. You can also hit the enter button too. Okay, then how many lines do you want? We're gonna do 10 lines again. Enter. Okay. Now, uh, we are going to go ahead and do an instruction and add a label here. Yep, instruction. Number five, jump label, label. There you go, label. Boom, okay, good. We're gonna call this one label 10. You gotta, t no, you gotta tell it a 10, one zero. Enter. Boom. Okay, now we're gonna come down and we're gonna go all the way to line 11 down here. Now go instruction. We're gonna add the jump. So jump to label, jump label. 
Yep. Ten. Enter. Yep, there we go. Alright, so you notice we had this, this jump label and this label uh, at the top on line three. Uh, this is very, very common in, in robot code, and you'll pretty much have a structure like this in every single robot program. There has to be some type of a knit code that runs on a first cycle, and then code that uh, is constantly running after that initial cycle. And this is, will be considered your main loop. There are some odd instances where some companies will program in a way where everything's in a function abort, and a lot of the init stuff is handled on the PLC. And like that's where like the PLC is like 110% the master and really doesn't do anything else besides, and the robot really doesn't do any decision making. It's all controlled by the PLC. But you don't see that uh, very often, especially with that level of PLC control. Uh, now this next part that we're gonna add is gonna be uh, an example of a PLC input or a PLC giving the robot a decision of what it should do. So instruction, we'll go three, if select. Yep. Okay, now we need to go over to the next menu. Oh, just go back over to line six. Boom, instruction. Yep, now go if, and whenever you're in this one, it's kind of best just to use your arrows and then enter. You hit your enter button. Yep. Now go, use your arrow to the right so that you can get over to the next menu. Yep. Okay. Now go select number four. Yep. Boom. Enter. Good job. Okay. So we're going to use a register. We're just going to call this one register 10 as well. So put a 10. Enter. Okay. And then it's saying. Uh, now it's the next field. So do you want it, this to be a register, a constant, an argument, an SR? I can't remember what S is, R is off the top of my head. Uh, so what, what do we want this to be and what is this? This is the value that we would be receiving from the PLC that would then do another action, right? So we're just going to set this up as a constant, which go ahead and select two which this is very common too. You'll see this set up as a constant very often. Now put a one in there. Yep, enter. Okay, now we're gonna do a, notice you have the option to do a jump label, call program, and then also call a program with an argument. Go to, yep, call program. And we're gonna call pick on this one, underscore pick. Yep, perfect. Okay, so, if your register one, or if your register 10 is equal to a one, call pick, okay? Now I do wanna throw in one more caveat that the register 10 is not a direct value from the PLC. There's more code that needs to go along with the PLC actually passing that value. And hopefully we'll get to a point where we make a video of the PLC passing the value to a register. It's actually a really simple piece of code, uh, but we'll, we'll handle that one in another video. So now go back up to line seven. Yep. Instruction. Instruction. Boom. Go uh, if. Yep. Go another if statement. And then you want to go over there. Yep. Boom. Arrow. And then down. We're going to go to five. Select. Okay. Constant. Constant. Yep. And then we're going to call this one a two. Two. Enter. Okay. Now we're gonna call a program again. Yep. Now we're gonna go down and we're gonna say place palette. Place palette. Okay, now go ahead and do an instruction again. Yep. If select. There you go. Go over to, yep. Good job. Go down to select again. Select. Select. No, number five, select. Right there. Boom, boom. There you go. We're gonna do a constant again. Constant. Mm -hmm. Two. And we're gonna make it a three. Three. 
And so a constant just means a hard set number that never changes. Enter. Call program. And then we're gonna say, uh, what was this one, test? Uh, you can go, we can scroll all the way down to the bottom. I believe test, right there, enter. Yep, perfect. So this one right here would be the exact same functionality uh, that you've seen in the last structure. The only difference is you're writing the code in a, in a different type of structure. Now this right here is very common because you could take this and, and go uh, constant four, constant five, constant six, and call all the different types of programs, multiple, multiple programs. Um, and then we'll go instruction, if, go over to the next menu, and let's go uh, select else. Select else right here. Yep, boop. We accidentally selected jump to label, okay? That was actually the one I wanted to use anyway. Uh, and I'm just gonna show you, so else statement basically says if it's none of these, do this other thing, right? And so what we're gonna say for to do this other thing is we're gonna make this a 10, jump to label 10. So, let me get the mouse. So if, if, if it's not any of these numbers, so for example, right now it's set to a zero, okay? So it's gonna go else and it's gonna jump to label 10 right up here. So it didn't actually change this code at all because uh, there's nothing underneath line number nine. But let's say for instance, if we was gonna do something along the lines of, maybe it was gonna do a secondary test, right? And so then you would go do something like instruction, call, call program. Let's, I'm just gonna put pick press one, right? Maybe we're gonna do some other function. So we always perform one of these three functions and then we perform this other function down here. But if we don't perform any of these functions, we don't wanna get down here and run this code without one of these other functions happening before that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because I don't want to add any confusion. I just wanted to show you guys how that particular else statement worked and how it may have effect in the program in, in, in a way that you may wanna use it. Edit command, one, one, insert one line, get us back to here, boom. Now let's go, let's see if we can do shift, shift, forward, reset, function, one aboard all, and let's go forward, 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 boom. It jumped back up to label 10. So as you can see there, your, your register 10 is set to a zero, so it's not equal to one, it's not equal to a two, it's not equal to a three. Forward, 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 and it keeps jumping back up to label 10. If we didn't have this else statement right here, it would get down to this jump to label 10 and still jump up to label 10. Um, matter of fact, we can go select. Let's go back to this main right here. We'll do the same thing. You gotta do a function one aboard all because it's gonna be latched to the other program. Uh, I'm gonna skip call home. And then we're gonna go forward, forward, forward. Oh, it's actually gonna call all these. I'll just let it call it. Oh, I taught some stuff yesterday. Another video we did. So I'll just let it run through this program real quick. You can get to see the, the robot move a little bit. Boom. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Now we're running at a faster speed. Okay, boom. Call place palette. Nothing in that program. Call test. Nothing in that program. Jump to label 10. Boom. And we jump back up to the top here. So then we'll go back through the same pick process again. Let me turn off uh, step. So here's the step function. That's why I'm able to hit forward, 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 and forward through the program. Like if I go like this, it'll just run. Now notice, see how uh, this code is just staying right here and not going anywhere else? It's because it's actually running these moves. It's jumping out of this program, running through all the other code and coming back into this program quicker than the visuals of this program can actually change. So it just looks like we're just staying constantly stuck in this program. But if I take it back into step mode, boom, and you see forward, 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 boom, we're back out of the, the pick program. So there's certain things to think about that, think about whenever you're writing programs that you can jump out of a program and back into another one before you even realize that you uh, jumped out of a program.
it may look like you're just staying consistently in one program, even though you're actually not. I'm gonna go back to, let's turn that off, go back to select, main one. Uh, the thing that I wanted to show you now is that uh, if I go to data, right, this will take us to our register menu. Uh, and we, we had selected uh, register number 10 as our data value. So I'm gonna just go ahead and change this, this register 10 to a one. We're gonna go back to select, go back into our main one. And then uh, I'm gonna just run through this code again. Forward, oh, latched onto the other code. Function one aboard all, reset. Forward, okay, boom. We just jumped into the pick program. Now we jumped out of the pick program. Uh, we have a call is equal to two. It's gonna skip past that one. It's gonna skip past that one. And now it's going to jump back up to the top again. Oh no, it didn't jump back up to the top. Sorry about that. It didn't jump back up to the top because one of these happened, right? Remember this is the else statement. So if, if none of these happened, do this thing. But one of these did happen, so uh, it ignores this else statement. Else statement is very powerful and on the older robots you didn't have the else statement. All right, so we're gonna be able to go down here, jump to label 10, boom, back to the top. We're gonna go one more time to data. I'm gonna just change this one to a three. Enter, so our register 10, we change it to a three. Go back to select, main one. Uh, and I'm gonna let you hit forward through this program, okay? So just click it once at a time. So forward, 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 forward. Okay, now hold on. Notice how we didn't jump in to call pick. Okay, we skip past that one because we changed that value from being a one to being a three. Go ahead and skip past it. Hit the next, or forward, yep, forward. Boom, we jumped into the test program. Now we jumped into that test program because uh, our value of that register is a three. Go ahead and forward through again. We're gonna jump, yep, we're gonna jump back out of this program because there was really nothing in the program. Then go ahead and forward through. The else statement won't happen because one of the other values was true. Boom, now we're back up at the top. And uh, that kind of covers it. So here's one more method of how to create a FANUC robot program. And make sure you stay tuned, hit that subscribe button because one of the next videos that we'll be doing is another structure video like this. Uh, I wanna just kind of show you guys a few different ways to create structures uh, so that way you have these tools when it comes to being able to uh, create a robot program. And some of these things you may run in instances uh, where this one's better than that one. Uh, so just keep that in mind that a lot of these things, these programming methods uh, may or may not have a particular place. And some of it may just be preference and maybe just the way a company goes about doing things. But there are also instances where uh, it makes sense to do to write code in a particular way that either reduces the amount of code, makes it easier to read, or makes it easier to adjust and adapt the program for future modifications. Hopefully uh, this video is useful for you guys, and we'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye. Get a huge thumbs up. <laughs>